Welcome to Fanatics Live, where we virtually connect you with your favorite stars and athletes right at home. Tonight, we will be meeting with fans, signing autographs, and engaging in live Q&A. Now, let's welcome our host. Hey, everybody. Welcome into another edition of Fanatics Live, where we bring your favorite athletes to you right at home. I'm your host, Doug Plagans, and before we bring in our special guest here in just a moment, I want to remind you that today's show is brought to you by the Fan Cash Rewards Card by Fanatics. As a Fan Cash Rewards card holder, you receive benefits and perks, including access to unforgettable experiences with athletes, earn 6% Fan Cash on every purchase, exclusive deals, offers, and much more. Well, it's time to bring in today's special guest. Inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 2021, he was a five-time All-Star. Five times he was All-NBA. The number one pick in the 1993 NBA draft went on to win Rookie of the Year honors that season. Finished off his high school career as Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan back in 1991. Time to bring in my fellow Michigander, you know him as C. Webb. He is the Hall of Famer, the great Chris Weber. Chris, how are you? Thanks for taking some time out for us today. I'm doing great, Doug. How are you doing? Doing awesome, and it's just an honor to get to chat with you. Watched you as a kid, so really exciting for me, I know, and a lot of the folks out there to be able to uh, hear from you today. But, Chris, wanted to give you and all the folks tuned in a little rundown of what we have here. I'm going to ask you some questions off the top. We will have some questions coming in from the folks on social media here in a little bit. We've got some people waiting patiently backstage. You're looking good. You're looking good. Yeah, just I can getting the flow that. right. Yeah, just tighten and, the flow. <laughs> and, you, and you know we're not going to let you off easily. we got the rapid fire portion coming up uh, later on in the show. So hope you got your thinking cap on uh, on for that one. But, Chris, I want to start things off plain and simple. What have you been up to? What are you filling your time with these days? Oh, man. Well, let me show you real quick. Come here, guys. Come here. Come here. Hurry up. Come here. Come on out here. So I've just been working a lot, hanging out, and uh, watching. Uh, oh, who is, do we uh, have here? This is my son, Mac, and this is my daughter, Elle. So they're five years old. And so I've just been spending so much time. Now get out of here. Beat it. Uh, with family. Nah. Okay, go to mommy. Go to mommy. No, I've just spending time with family, having a great time, and, uh, you know, uh, taking some interest in some business ventures as well. And, Enjoying basketball. We had a lot of great games this year and a uh, wonderful series. So uh, just uh, being, a, being a fan as well. So uh, just good things. Oh, the NBA is exciting as ever. No doubt about that. And a beautiful family you have there. But Chris, Thank wanted you. to get to some things. Uh, going back to your career, obviously, congratulations to you. 2021, you entered the Basketball Hall of Fame. A tremendous honor there. And in mentioning that experience, when you look back on it, Obviously, it's one of the biggest individual accomplishments you can have. Is there anything that stands out above all else when you think back to your induction day and everything that went with it? Well, I think when I think about the induction day, um, there were so many thoughts that were going through my head. And so the only clear vision that kept coming through was, was my parents and, uh, you know, just being thankful for my mother and kind of, um, you know, her presence in my life and then my father who you know, as, as a, a, the oldest of five, as just, uh, you know, looking up to my father, the great man that he is, I always wanted him to be proud. And it didn't take the Hall of Fame to be proud. He told me many times before, however, um, I'm proud of him. And so being able to give him that uh, ring and he has the jacket, I hope he hasn't worn it to church, but uh, he has the ring and the jacket. And so to me, that's the, the biggest moment was that, uh, you know, I was able to just let him know how much he meant to me and to bless him with what the hall gave me personally. Oh, it's awesome. And just uh, like I said, congratulations again. It's one Thank of the you. best honors that you can have. And it's it gives you goosebumps watching induction ceremonies year after year after year. And so cool that you got to experience that. And something else that gives you goosebumps. You think back to the atmosphere at the Arco Arena. I know back when you played, you played in so many big games there. And over the next few months, they're going to be tearing down the uh, the old Arco Arena. And you always heard that the atmosphere there, the energy, it was virtually second to none in the NBA. When you think back to some of the big games you played there, some of the great years you played there, what made that building and that environment so special? 
I, I tell you what, it, it was the people. It was the people of Sacramento. I mean, whenever I see Phil Jackson, when I used to talk to my friend Kobe, rest in peace, we would always, first thing would come to is the series and then the rivalries, and then they would talk about how crazy the fans were. I mean, I, you know, just really think about 20,000 people in an arena with cowbells. I mean, really think about that. We as a team had to prepare ourselves for it, and it was great because it was on our side. However, you know, that ringing would be in your ears for two to three days. So when I think about Arco Arena, the barn, I think about the, the wood rafters. You could hear it creaking. I remember being in the locker room before, um, I believe it was game five with the Lakers or one of those games, and uh, you could hear people stomping out there in the locker room. And while Coach was giving a speech, you know, you're, you're getting goosebumps. So it's a special place and uh, some great memories there. I know they're tearing the building down. You still can't, you know, kill the spirit of Sacramento. So, uh, But it was good times there in that arena. Was there any way you could simulate that before a big game? I know that, you know, with in the NFL, the NBA, you have to prepare for that when you're going into a, an environment where you know it's going to be loud, whether it's your home building or a road building. You know what? I think it's like, you know, if, if I love football. And if I was a football player and I got drafted to Green Bay, even if I was from Arizona, California, or the desert, all of a sudden I have to make my mind ready to play and snow, and that's what the fans do, you know, while you're going to practice, when you're at the grocery store, anywhere you go, the gas station, the fans are so sincere that they let you know. So you expect some crazy things in that arena. And so, you know, they kind of warm you up to it, but you you can't you can't simulate it, not without going, you know, deaf after five practices. You have to, you know, you just have to let it be organic. Well, I just remember watching some of those games. You just felt the energy coming out through the TV screen. So many big games at the, uh, at the Arco had to be. A special place. And now, without further ado, Chris, I want to bring in some of the folks who've been waiting patiently backstage, some big Chris Weber fans who want to chat Let's with go. you. And Let's we are go. Gonna, we're going to go all the way out to Honolulu, Hawaii here first. We've got Michael coming in from Honolulu, says he's been a fan of yours, Chris, since uh, your freshman season at Michigan. Also, fun fact, says the first basketball jersey he ever owned was that of the great Michael Jordan. Let's go to Michael Way out in Honolulu, Hawaii. Michael, uh, aloha and welcome in here on Fanatics Live. You're with Chris Weber. Aloha. How's it going, Chris? Hey, aloha, Mike. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Uh, we were joking earlier um, when I logged in that it's it's still like 9, 9 a.m. here. And uh, you guys you guys are like mostly through your day. It's so It's so weird, but... Uh, thanks for oh making God. time for this. I really appreciate it. I, I've I've watched you since I'm a, probably a couple years older than you, but I, I've I've followed you, um, you know, since since I was a teenager, and and, and you're in Michigan, and just so amazing. Uh, and, and your smile, oh, man, that smile, it, it's it hasn't gone away. You know, I think that's one of your <laughs> signature Mike. things. You just have this like happy look in your face. But my question was, you know, obviously you've accomplished so many things in your basketball career. And I was just curious, what do you personally feel was your greatest achievement? Wow. Uh, first of all, I love the jersey in the back. And I'm sure, you know, even though it's nine in the morning where you are, it's probably like 84 degrees, probably beautiful outside. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? Mike? It is. Yeah. You're all right. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful place. Um, uh, I think, wow, that, that's really so tough to to answer that because it was so many great moments and without that great moment would I have made it to the next moment you know so maybe in stages for me it was really high school and you know playing against greats that had come before me and so you got to realize like when you're 15 or 14 and you're playing against Derek Coleman and Steve Smith or Isaiah Thomas or Mark Aguirre you know you can't sleep the night before and when you score a point and you do well or you don't do well and then you have the heart to get back up and come back the next practice, you know, those were kind of the building blocks that, that made me who I am. And then, you know, Michigan is so special, you know, with the guys there. And so uh, Jalen Jawan, Jimmy Ray, and, you know, definitely can't take that away. Coach Fisher, the Michigan crazies and all of the wonderful times I had in Ann Arbor. And then being a young man, you know, reaching goals and then, you know, the NBA, after having those great experiences, saying, you know, how can you keep the love? How do you keep consistency over anything? And so, Mike, that's probably a terrible way to answer your questions, but I'm, I'm so thankful for the milestones at each area along the way that I think if I were to pick one out, maybe besides making the Hall of Fame at the end, that it would almost disrupt the journey that I had. And so, you know, along the way, there were so many great memories. Um, so it's 
it, 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 it's kind of hard to pick one, but being a, you know the first pick in the NBA draft and 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 being to have a, a, a great career is something that um, I'll always be proud of. Oh, it makes sense. Our, our our life is, I guess, culmination of all of our experiences and achievements. So it's, I, I, it makes sense. I, I get it. Yeah, yeah, that's a tough. Besides, anytime we beat, you know, Ohio State, because I hate that school. Or, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm trying to think of somebody else to make mad out there. But uh, you know, of course, I got some great memories uh, along, you know, along the way. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, some good times. Some good times, yeah. Awesome, yeah, awesome. Michael. Yeah, Mike. I uh, let me. I got a. I got a ball for you here, Mike. I want to hook you up with with something. Uh, cool. Thank you. I, I remember uh, actually one of my favorite memories is that uh, we played at a tournament in Hawaii. I think it was the Hawaii Classic, and actually, you know, people. I don't know how many people realize this or not, but that same year that we lost to North Carolina in the finals, boo North Carolina, uh, but we beat them there by a last second tip in. Uh, I think it was Jimmy King or something like that and played Kansas. And I remember it was the first time I had seen a, a warm weather beach, you know, I'm from Michigan. So I seen frozen lakes, but uh, I just remember how beautiful it was there. So right now I'm a little jealous of you uh, oh, man. <laughs> sitting out there in the, in the beautiful weather, but let me sign this for you, Mike. Well, congratulations on your twins. You got twins, I assume. Yeah, game. I do. I yeah. do. Yeah, boy. How's your jumper, Mike? You got a good jumper? Or how's your game? Because the uh, jumper never I, gets old. I, you know, like my my inscription there says, I'm probably better at passing than shooting. <laughs> okay. I'm wondering because I'm putting Mike past the rock. I'm like, are you a hog? Is that why I'm like, telling you to pass the rock? Because you won't pass it? Is, is this something your teammates wanted me to give to you? Or? Mike's no, a they're facilitator. like, pass the because you always miss. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mike's the facilitator, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. You like Mike Bibby, you know, you have Mike Bibby had the jump shot and he could pass. Or my man Jay Will, because uh because he could shoot and, and pass that thing too. Or Rod Strickland, who I played with, because he could oh shoot. Oh my gosh. So I put Mike, God bless, pass the rock, baby. This is uh, oh, that's beautiful. Is yeah, beautiful. yeah. And I'd I'd be proud if you put me up there next to my man Kobe because uh he's an inspiration. I so. will. I'm All right, man. Thank Definitely. you, Chris. Thank you. Have an amazing day. Thank you. You too. Thank you very much, Mike in Honolulu. Yeah, I hope he has a, a good uh, long rest of his day out there. And, Chris, I love the way you put that, too. When you're fortunate enough to have a career as long as you did, every experience is part of the journey, and you just have to take the most that you can from everything that you encounter along the way. Yeah, I mean, you have to. Uh, you know, you have to enjoy the moments. And really those moments that you're tested and you're tried, when you look back, you have a better appreciation for them because you wonder, if I didn't go through that moment, mm -hmm. would I have been prepared, propelled to the next one? So, you know, you just try to look back with as much grace and thankfulness as, as you can. But that was yeah. cool talking. That was cool talking to Mike. Yeah, great perspective there. Thanks again, Mike and Honolulu, for uh, joining us. Let's bring it back to the lower 48 now. We're going to go to Kurt. He is in the Midwest, Big Ten country. He is in Normal, Illinois, joining us here. He's a fan cash rewards card holder, so big thanks to Kurt for that. Says that the first basketball jersey he owned was a Chris Weber number four Michigan blue jersey. So we're going to bring man. in Kurt. Kurt from Illinois joining us now. Kurt, welcome in. You're on Fanatics Live with Chris Weber. I can't believe this. I cannot believe I'm talking with Chris Weber. It's 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 such a privilege. I'm such an honor to meet you, Chris. Hey man, I never heard of Normal Illinois, Kurt. Normal, like what? what where are you close to? What's Normal um, close to? to? Right in the center of the state, like two hours uh, south of uh, Chicago. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's yeah it's the uh, it's the headquarters for State Farm Insurance. So uh, oh, that's okay. that's why I'm here. Uh, I used to have a presence in Michigan. Uh, I grew up in Lansing. I lived most oh, okay. of my life there, and okay. I have a presence in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, a, a cabin up there. So I'm still a Michigander. That's what's up. And as, as you're my man, because you got great hair, so that's how we do it. Yeah. You, know you know, I've been rocking this hair since the pandemic. I grew it out. Um, actually, uh, my claim to fame from a Michigan standpoint, let me see if I can get it on here, you know, is um, I have a – it's kind of a is hard angle a to see. But a it's a Corvette, but it's uh, – it's done, and it's kind of hard to show because of I the, see that uh, goal. That, that, I see that maze yeah. right there. I see that. Yeah, yeah there cool. we go. There yeah. we go. Yeah. And, and so, shirt, yeah. yeah, and so it says, uh, my license plate was hail. Hail to the victors. Um, and uh, so basically, you know, growing up um, in Michigan, I'm, I've been in, 
I grew up in Lansing, um, but I'm, I'm a Michigan fan. Both my parents graduated from Michigan State, but I'm still a Michigan fan. Um, I became a Michigan fan in uh, 1989. Um, well, actually, that's when it kind of was culminating from a standpoint of uh, watching them win the championship against oh, Seton yeah. Hall. You know, that Ramil. was a great time. Ramil, you know. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so shortly after, you know, um, with the Fab Five coming in 92, 93, uh, it was just natural to, to get engaged with it. And you are one of my favorite players. I actually picked this up in um, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. This. Uh, oh, thank ah. you. That's, <laughs> that's there we go. Yeah, that's the young boy right there, the ball head. All right, yeah. Yes. That's the days, the Harachis. I love yes. that picture. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's great. And yeah. so one of the things I love most about you when, when you played was, um, and I don't know if other people ever commented on this to you, but to me, the, one of the things that just uh, amazed me was how fast you could dunk the basketball once somebody dropped it to you in the paint. It was like instantaneous, it felt like. You know what I mean? Has anybody yeah. commented to you on that before? You know what's funny, Kurt? When I used to play, some players would come and ask me about that. And it's so funny you say that because at times I would try to jump and just see if my elbow could hit or how high you could get up. But what I learned from, uh, I think I was talking to Mike, a guy before is that when I, so I was younger and I played against guys, say when I was 13, um, you know, I'm like six, five and maybe I could dunk or six, six. What I learned was um, don't mess around, get your feet together, go up, boom. And I snuck dunk so many people like that because, you know, as I'm getting a rebound, I was already thinking, go back up. And it works in college, but it definitely works against Matumbo and Sean Bradley because uh, you need to get up before they can get up timing and see where it is. But, you know, sure. I really never had anybody notice that before. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the question I, I actually had, I, I don't know, it kind of fits in with the, the prior um, question was, uh, you know, do you have like a, a standout uh, memory at Michigan? And, I, you know, it could even be off the court, you know, if there's if there's something that uh, comes to mind is something that, uh, you know, brings you back. Man, so many. As I'm laughing, I'm trying to think of which one. Um, you know, one of one of my favorite memories of Michigan is the first time I met all the fellas together. So I've known Jayla forever, known Juwan forever, and met Jimmy at uh, the McDonald's All-American game. But all five of us had never been together until we were in front of the dorm. And without going too long, I'm, I'm going to give you some good stuff because you're from Michigan. Just imagine five guys that are just really young and you know, it's all this talk about recruiting and all this stuff, but we really, we don't know, you know, we're just living in the moment. And I remember uh, playing basketball against some guys that we had went to high school with right away. So the first thing we're supposed to pack our stuff, leave all our stuff right there and just get an impromptu game, return on the radio and it turns like into a party on campus. And to me, you know, so much of who we were was chemistry. So much of who we were was how we cared and loved for each other, how we really played for each other. And that moment, just guys, me and guys getting together, playing, talking junk against some guys that played soccer in high school. You know what I mean? And so yeah. like, that moment is to me is always special because it was the first time we were all, we were all on the court together. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Go blue. <laughs> go blue. Oh, go blue. I got you right here. Now I'm going a, I'm to a sign this for you, but I feel like I should put to my man with the maze Corvette, but I don't have enough room on here, but <laughs> I really appreciate you, Kurt. And uh, even though you were born in Lansing, I have a brother that went to Michigan State, so I guess I could deal with you, too. <laughs> it's all love. Yeah, we got a full Michigan uh, block here. I'm I'm from right here, south of Detroit. You guys know what it – you guys know what I'm doing when I do that. Yeah, the glove, baby, <laughs> home of the glove. Sign this right here. Yeah, and Chris, I have uh, identical twins um, as well. You know. Oh, so, do you? Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's it, hey. You got to have energy, right? You got to. Oh, be that's ready. for sure. For sure. <laughs> as soon as you wake up, let's go. But I, I got this for you, Kurt. Man, I just want to tell you, you know, um, everyone that that supports me, thank you. And 
it's just crazy. And being a sports fan, I don't take for granted the, the love that's there. And uh, the love in Michigan has been like like no other, you know. And so uh, that's what's up. I love uh, I love the uh, Corvette. Keep it keep it smooth. I love the hair. Don't cut it <laughs> until we win a until we win a championship this year. When uh, you know Juwan takes the boys uh, wherever yeah. the final four is going. I gotcha. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kurt. Thank you, Kurt. Thanks, uh, Michael, before him. And and Chris, you talk about those Michigan teams. I can speak as somebody who was watching you guys as a kid. And you guys had so much talent and chemistry. You can see that. But you had a cool factor, too, that just went with all of it that's been uh, virtually unmatched. And it was just such a fun time to be a, a sports fan, especially in that yeah. region. And, uh, and Chris, now I want to switch gears uh, going to where we let the folks on social media chime in and have a turn asking some questions. Folks, you can make sure to follow Fanatics on Instagram. Keep an eye out for stories where you can submit your best questions to each of our guests and earn a chance to have it answered live on air. First up, we are going to bring in via Instagram. This is DJ here on Fanatics Live. Hey, Chris. Uh, this is DJ, big fan of uh, Michigan and the Fab Five and of you, of course. Uh, question: My question is, um, in college, you were a great inside threat and mid-range shooter. Uh, when did you transition, and how hard was the transition to uh, the pros to be uh, the prolific outside shooter that you want to be? Oh, man, thanks for the question, and go blue. Um, you know, thank you for the question, because it really was a, a tough transition, because when I started to play, you got to realize, um, first of all, the NBA players we have today are the best group of talented players that the game has ever seen. So I want to be clear about that. However, if it wasn't for, say, uh, the excellence of Bird showing us that big men can shoot, or Mike Magic Johnson being so tall and dribble, you know, would we see a LeBron or a Kevin uh, Durant? And so... At this time of the game, big guys weren't allowed to dribble down the middle of the court, weren't allowed to shoot threes. And that's one of the things, you know, I really thank Coach Fisher, uh, my high school coach, um, Coach Keener, uh, and my NBA coaches for allowing me to be part of that transition of that point forward. And so it was it was uh, tough, but I had a wonderful shooting coach in Buzz Brayman, who we would work with all the time and kind of um, make sure that, um, you know, my game could stretch out. And then I played with great passers, whether it was Washington with Jawan or Chris Mullen, who really helped me get my shooting right and Golden State and Spreewell and so many Strickland and she, there's so many players I'd have to say that, you know, really allowed me to take my game out because they were getting double teamed or driving and making great passes. So I was getting open looks, but it was, um, it, it, it was pretty tough. It took about two, two and a half summers because you really can't work on it during the season to get comfortable about two and a half summers. Um, but the hardest part was recognizing you better get better in this area. And then once you realize that everything else is, is just work. Yeah. Chris, you were kind of a, a pioneer in that. And you saw the evolution in the league in that, because now we've got seven footers who come in and they can shoot threes. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, the players, I mean, Kevin Durant is just, he's ridiculous. Kevin Durant is just, he's, I don't know if he's human. I mean, it's, it's, the, the length he has, the height he has, the fact he can shoot like a guard. I mean, you, you look at all these skills from all the best players, you know, LeBron's stability and how long he's been around. This is a fun era of basketball. What a time to be alive as a basketball fan. And it's definitely because of those that came before us. But I was in that sweet spot of transition. And I do wish I'm envious of the freedom these guys have right now. Um, but it's only because they earned it. Yeah, some of the most creative players we've seen in a long time, and they're getting uh, to use that creativity. Let's go now to Kim on Instagram. Hey, Chris. Uh, my name is Kim Wong. I'm a Fanatics Fan Cash Wars member from uh, San Antonio, Texas. And I just wanted to ask you, what was your favorite part about working on the Uncle Drew movie? <laughs> What's up, Kim? Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, what wasn't my favorite part was putting on makeup two and a half hours a day. Um, but so since I retired from basketball, I haven't necessarily missed the plan, but you missed the locker room. And working at TNT uh, gave me that feeling. And this was the exact same feeling. Shaq is the, he's a great guy, one of the smartest guys I know business-wise, and he is the absolutely silliest man walking the earth. So you got to watch your back from pranks from Shaq and, then, you know, Nate Robinson is is messing up every scene because he's looking at you, trying to make you laugh while you're doing a famous scene. And Reggie 
Miller won't come out of character. He's really acting like he's blind the whole time. He's kind of getting on your nerves. It, it was a wonderful experience, man. Uh, it was so it was so much fun to do. And uh, I think my favorite experience was, was being around uh, the cast. But also, you know, uh, my daughter that just came on, she was the baby that I was dunking. And so I remember that because uh, that's something special. Um, I got the holder here for one second and we took a doll and did the rest. So um, I think that was, you know, the, the, you know, some of the most fun being around the guys, but then uh, being able to be a preacher and mimic uh, the church that I grew up in <laughs> and uh, having some fun with that. Very cool. A lot of different experiences from the Uncle Drew movie. And a big thanks to Kim for being a fan cash rewards card holder as well. Last but certainly not least, let's go to Ben on Instagram. I'm Ben. I'm from Murray. And who is your toughest player to guard? Toughest player to guard. Ooh, that's tough, Ben. I'm, a, I'm just going to give you a week in the NBA, and, and I'll let you pick. This was a week, let's say uh, seven games, uh, two back-to-backs, and then three every other day. Let's start with uh, Rasheed Wallace, then Carmelo, then Shaq, then Dirk Nowitzki, then Tim Duncan, then Akeem Olajuwon, and throw in uh, – uh, did I say Kevin Garnett? <laughs> if I didn't, oh, yeah, I should have said no. him first. Oh, but throw Kevin Garnett in, and that was a week in the NBA. So, you know, you tell me who was the hardest because, you know, uh, all those guys gave me nightmares. So it was, uh, it was a good league. It was a league of power four was then, and you had to be ready every night. That Western Conference was just a gauntlet there during yeah, that yeah. era. So tough. So tough. Proud to be from that era with, uh, with players like that. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a crazy time. That West was just so loaded. Chris, we're going to take a brief pause here. We'll come back in just a moment after a word from our sponsor. Introducing the FanCash Rewards Credit Card by Fanatics. Earn 6% FanCash when you shop with your card on Fanatics.com with exclusive cardholder perks and six-month special financing on purchases of $150 or more. Text now to apply or go to Fanatics.com. Today's show is brought to you by the Fan Cash Rewards Card by Fanatics. For more information on exclusive perks and benefits of being a card holder, head on over to fanatics.com or text fan events to 94323 to apply now. All right, well, Chris, you made it this far. We told you we weren't going to let you off easily. We've got the rapid fire portion of the show. Some of it coming from basketball, some of it outside of basketball. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, here we go. Well, you've been fortunate to travel to a lot of places, whether it's through basketball or otherwise. What's a place that you want to visit? A place that I want to visit. Yes. Uh, a place that, uh, let's go with, the place I would love uh, to visit is uh, Alaska. I'm watching it on TV. I want to go fishing. I want to hang out and see some bears. Alaska. It's very cool. I have been up there. I was thinking earlier when we talked to Mike in Honolulu, I need to get out there. I've never been Yeah, that's where you need to get. Yeah, that's yeah. where you need to go. <laughs> Yeah, I need yeah. I need to check check that out. Uh, Chris, yeah. you signed it. You signed a couple autographs a little bit ago as well. Whose autograph do you want, or maybe whose autograph do you have that you've gotten that was a big thrill? Well, I, I love that um, I have Kobe's autograph uh, on some things that he gave my uh, my family, and I, I would say, um, wow, that's a tough question. Yeah, uh, Nelson Mandela. I have Nelson Mandela's autograph, and uh, you know, he and Muhammad Ali. Probably the two coolest autographs I have. Wow, that is really cool. Yeah. And yeah. and something else I like to ask guys too. Uh, some guys are really big on keeping memorabilia, artifacts from your career. Some guys not as much. Did you save a lot of stuff? You know what? I didn't. I didn't say. Well, I, I did save some stuff from my career, but you know, I think funnier is that I've saved stuff from others careers so ai was a teammate and when he left i took stuff out of his locker mike Bibby, i took some I, it's, it's it's about 10 guys in the league i have their whole locker in my house with shoes and jerseys and things like that so i do try to appreciate the moment i played with some great players and so i i hold on to the memories of playing with others more so than than my memories in the league well so much of going through it is the people that you're surrounded by and that's that's yeah. really special to be able to keep that stuff uh, favorite sport outside of basketball, Chris? What is it? Football, 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 football. I mean, I think, you know, most people probably would say that, but, you know, football definitely. I think I'm a golfer, so I would say that it's the one I active, but, uh, yeah, football definitely is my favorite sport. So you're a football fan. Does that mean you are a Lions fan like I am? Who's your favorite team? I am a Lions fan. I am a, I am a Lions fan and uh, a proud Lions fan, and uh, I'm going to die a Lions fan. And uh, hopefully we will win a Super Bowl before I die. 
I think things are heading the right direction. I, I, I'm feeling good about uh, about the future. Chris, you talk about how entertaining the league is right now. What a good place it's in with all the high skilled players. Who, in your mind, is the most entertaining player to watch? Who's must see TV these days? Well, I think LeBron is always must see TV. I think Kyrie is must see TV because of uh, how engaging he is off the court. So you want to see if he's going to bring that every night. Durant, to me, is one of the most incredible players you know I've ever you know seen, and, and so you know. Uh, I, I would say him, uh, Kawhi Leonard. You know, there's so many players. Uh, I mean, if you like defense and, and you want some trash talking, then you got to go with Patrick Beverly, uh, PG-13, you know, uh, the PG. Uh, um, so, so many guys in this league. And I think that's what's great. You know, you can follow a team. You can follow players. I mean, you can follow players off the bench and still have some of the best players in the league. I mean, Edwards and in, in, uh, uh, Minnesota, I mean, you know, he's somebody I just love his game. So I have uh, so many players that I've just been checking out. Yeah, every team's got a guy that can just wow you. John Morant comes to mind for me. Uh, love How did love I watching say him? him play, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He should have been one of the first names, you know, John Morant. Dame Lillard. Oh. Uh, I mean, so many. Zion. You, you know, yeah. you, you could just add to the Koopa. You know, we, yeah. we could just keep going, you know. And I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, the, the rookies. I'm looking forward to seeing the, the number one pick. Can't wait to see him. Can't wait to see Jaden. Uh, Ivy down there in um, in Detroit. So, uh, I, you know, I have some great players that I love and some ones that I just can't wait to become fans of as they start playing the league. Yeah, so many special players in the league and on the way. Chris, you talked about it a little bit there when you mentioned some of your old teammates, but if you could have jersey swapped with anyone, who would it have been? Or was there a time that you did jersey swap with somebody that you're always going to remember? Yeah, no, nah, jersey swapping wasn't allowed in my day. You probably would have got fined by the coach or something like that. Uh, but I, I would say, you know, I played against some great players. I mean, I think I played against, you know, two of the top five or ten players all the time when you talk about Kobe and, and Shaquille O'Neal and being in that, you know, rivalry. Or or I would have done it definitely with the Kim Olajuwon. I got to play my first NBA game against uh, the year he won MVP uh, or had previously won MVP. So I've just been blessed to be around so many guys. Hell, I'll go in Magic Johnson's house. I've never played against him, but if he had a jersey, I probably would steal it. So it's a lot of guys that, um, you know, if I, if I had the opportunity, I'd swap jerseys with. Yeah, so many big stars uh, in that era you played especially. Chris, what's a, what's a superpower you would like to have? Taking it off the court a little bit. Wow, a superpower I'd like to have. That's great. I like to fly. If I could fly, I, 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 you know, I'd be great. No traffic, get there when I want. <laughs> Pop down, go on a, a phone booth and put my suit on. I think that, that that'll be what it is to be able to fly. At least right yeah, now. You, you, could, you could take all the bags with you you wanted. You wouldn't have to worry about packing anything like you that. Know, just, man, just, 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 just take off, man. No, no boundaries at any time. Be able to see the world from a different view. Just get up and go. Just get up it, and go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> taking it taking it back onto the court, best on best. What was a matchup during your career that just really got the juices flowing for you? I mean, anytime you think about um, personally, it was always playing against the best. And so whoever at the time was the best, I mean, you think about a Carl Malone and Charles Barkley, uh, I looked up to them and they were top 50 players of all time. And when I came into the NBA, I was the youngest player two years in a row. And I remember – just the strength gap, the, the maturity gap. And so um, at the time it was them again, check and shack. And anytime we played against the Lakers, I, I would have to say that was, you know, the most intense matchup uh, that we have because Shaq is the most dominant. And, uh, you know, with Kobe and another Hall of Famer there and, and Phil Jackson, you always had to be prepared. And so um, many matchups throughout, but I would say anytime it was Shaq or anyone on that Laker team that we had to match up, it was no one that I wanted to beat more. Now, we talked about it already, but night after night after night, the teams you were playing out west in that era, it was just uh, – it was a loaded conference. Chris, what's your your go-to snack? You're walking around the house. You're hungry. What are you reaching for? Oh, man, the de-shelled uh, pistachios. I'm, oh. I'm addicted. I got to stop. I have an issue. I have a problem with that. Um, and then uh, also I, I really can't eat unless I have uh, this this very hot, hot sauce. And so I'm I'm a hot sauce guy. And so if it's one food item I need wherever I go, it's 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 probably something with habanero or scotch bonnet peppers in it. And, and, and I just I just love that. So the pistachios and hot sauce, man, that's what you like. You like the zing. And hey, pistachios are good for you. You can't have too many of those. 
No, that's true. That's true. It's a healthy snack. It is a it is a nutritious snack, Chris. Something I like to ask. Last one here. Uh, looking back on your career, was there a favorite teammate, a guy that comes to mind where you say, if you could go back and have one day on the practice court or go to battle one more time with this guy, who would it be? Man, the first guy that, that came to mind when you said battle was Doug Christie. Um, he used to practice, you know, like he played. And uh, which was tough, and uh, those those battles there with the Lakers, uh, you know, if, if it's one guy to battle with, if it's one guy to, you know, be in the pick and roll with, uh, then it's Mike Bibby. If it's one guy to be on the fast break with, it's Jay Will. If it's one guy to just stand at the baseline and let them do their thing, it's Rod Strickland. So um, it's it's so many of those players. But if you if you talk about battle, it probably yeah it'd probably have to be uh, Doug Christie and Bobby Jackson. Wow, yeah, you you had a chance. You were fortunate. You played with so many good players over the course of your career. You, you played yeah. with some special guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, when I when I played with Sprewell, the young Sprewell, I remember it was a practice, and it's really when I was welcomed to the league. He, he did something, crossed me over, hurt my ankle or something. But I remember in the practice going, I've just never seen this athletic ability anymore. I've, I've never seen this speed, athletic ability, agility, hard work, you know, and so, you know, if I go to shooters, I don't know if the, the shooter I play with could be Peja Stoyakovich, uh, Chris Mullen, uh, Tim Legler, Tracy Murray. You know, I got the Mr. Keith Jennings. I got to play with some knockdown shooters too. So, you know, I kind of like going back through time because, you know, the players make you, you know, and hopefully you make them better. But, you know, if I went to battle, it'd be with this guy's. I need a jump shot. It'd be this guy's. I need an assist. It'd be this guy's because I played with so much, uh, so many great guys and they had so so much unique and specific talent. It was cool. So many great players. Uh, we could go on all day talking about this, but Chris, that takes us up to the to the end of the show. And I just wanted to thank you for stopping by. I want to thank everybody who chimed in with a question, everybody who watched today. And like I said, a thrill getting to talk to you. I watched you. I've been a fan since uh, since the early 90s at Michigan. And I uh, just want to say thanks for, thanks for being here today. And is there anything for all the folks out there, any uh, last uh, parting words for the people who tuned in? Well, yeah. So the best big man passes I played with was Jawan and 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 uh, my man Vladi. I, I can't I can't forget them. They used to throw me the oops all the time. But look at these what I just got, man. These are crazy. So we talk about oh. nostalgia. Yeah, these are from uh, the ninety one ninety two season. And so if I've been talking about us a little bit, it's because I'm surrounded by all these jerseys right now. So no party shots. Just uh, thank you guys for all the support. And um, I really respect it because I'm as big of a fan of sports as you are. So this is our community. And uh, I really appreciate I really appreciate the love. Uh, you know, it means a lot. Well, it means a lot to have had you here with us today. Thanks so much. Great getting to talk to you. Uh, best of luck. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again. Thank you. That's Chris Weber, the Hall of Famer, folks. Hope you had a great time. Certainly fun to hear from Chris, and we wish him all the best. As a reminder, folks, be sure to follow us on social media at Fanatics. Be able to submit your best questions for our future guest, and go to fanatics.com slash live to view any upcoming appearances and previous broadcasts. Again, huge thanks to Chris Weber for stopping by today. Thanks to everybody who joined in, asked a question today. We thank all of you who tuned in. Huge thanks to everybody for the great work behind the scenes. Lauren, behind the scenes, great job as always. And once again, thanks again for Chris to uh, Chris Weber for stopping by. I'm your host, Doug Plagans. Thanks again. This has been Fanatics Live.